Hey guys, we're going to look at a few function tasks in this video. So the first thing we're going to look at is, is a graph a function? And we're going to use the vertical line test to figure that out. What you'll do is imagine a vertical line passing through the graph. And if at any given point it only passes through once, just one point, we're going to say yes, it is a function. If a vertical line were to pass through multiple points, then we're going to say no, it is not a function. So one point passing through is yes, multiple points is no, and that is the vertical line test. The next thing we're going to look at is domain and range. And for domain, you're going to get in the, you're in the habit of thinking of domain as x values, and x values are left to right. So we're going to look at how the graph behaves to the left and to the right. Does it have an endpoint? Or will it continue indefinitely with arrows left to right? For the range, we're going to, again, develop a habit of thinking about y values. And y values are bottom to top. So when you look at the graph, you're looking for the behavior on the bottom and the top. Does it have a clear stopping point, bottom and top? Or will the graph continue indefinitely to the bottom and to the top. Let's look at a few examples. Does the graph represent a function? So the equation is f of x is equal to 2x minus 11. The line is shown on the graph, and we're going to take a vertical line test and pass it over the entire graph. And it only touches once, or passes through once, um, at any given point. So we're going to say yes, this one is a function. For the domain and the range, we're going to use interval notation. And remember, for domain, we're thinking x values and left to right. So we're going to look at the left of this graph. And looking at that arrow, it will continue infinitely to the left. And looking at the right of the graph with an arrow, it will continue infinitely to the right. So to express that in interval notation, we're going to use a negative infinity for our leftmost value and a positive infinity for our rightmost value. The next thing we're going to think about is the range. And again, in your head, you're thinking y values bottom to top. What does this graph do at the bottom? It will continue infinitely in a downward direction. How about the top? With the arrow, it will also continue infinitely in an upward direction. So we're going to do the same thing for the bottommost value when it does have an infinite um, but behavior, we're going to put a negative infinity. And for the topmost, we're going to put a positive infinity for this graph. So th this graph is showing a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity and a range of negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at a circle. Does this circle represent a function? Imagine your vertical line passing over it, and notice that it does hit at multiple points. So this is not a function because it crosses the graph at multiple points. Let's look at the interval notation for the domain again, thinking about x values left to right. The circle has a leftmost value because it stops at x is equal to negative 1. And on the right of the circle, the rightmost value, the rightmost x value, is 7. So we're going to use brackets this time to indicate a clear leftmost value of negative 1 and a rightmost value of 7. The next thing we're going to look at is the range, thinking about y values from bottom to top. The bottom of this graph is showing at y is equal to negative 1, and the top of this graph is showing at y equals 7. So for the same kind of a thing, we're going to show our bottommost value with a bracket at negative 1 and our topmost at 7. And this is just a coincidence that the numbers are the same. You're really looking at the graph and where does this graph um, s stop on the y's and where does it stop where the x values are. Okay, we're going to look at one other um, curve. And does it represent a function? Well, with a vertical line passing all the way over it, it only passes once. 
So we're going to say yes, that is a function. For the domain, we're going to look at the interval notation and think about the x values from left to right. And the leftmost value of this graph is a x is equal to negative 9. The rightmost value is showing at x is equal to negative 1. So we're going to use the brackets again for negative 9 at the left leftmost and negative 1 at the rightmost. For range, thinking about y values again. So we're looking at the bottom to the top. So the bottom value is a negative 7 on this graph. And the top value is negative 3. So showing that in interval notation, we're going to show brackets with negative 7 for the bottom and negative 3 for the top. One last example, if you just have points and not a continuous graph, you're still going to think about the domain and the range in terms of x's and y's. So with the domain, think about your x values left to right. I'm going to highlight all the x values in each of these coordinate pairs. And it's showing the, the specific numbers for each value. And you're just going to list those in a pair of braces to show that each value is distinct. All the x values make up the domain of this graph. And for the range, again, you're thinking of y values. I'm going to highlight all the y values. They're very distinct. There's no continuity. So we're going to just list those as well, and that will be the range of this graph. If you were to happen to have a repeated value, you would not list that value more than once in this list. But in our case, we have distinct values, and that is the conclusion of the domain and range video.